Hey guys, Michelle here. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I would show some modifications um, for pregnancy if you're after 20 weeks laying down on your back. Um, this is great if you're pregnant and you have a machine at home, some options that you can do for footwork or feet and straps, or if you're a new Pilates instructor or any Pilates instructor and you have a pregnant client. I know when I was a new instructor, I was always kind of nervous to train pregnant people because I didn't want them to get injured and I wanted to make sure I was doing the correct thing. So I just wanted to share four different alternatives or four different modifications where you could use, um, where pregnant people after 20 weeks could lay on their back that was safe. So here you go. So option one is my favorite option, but it is the most expensive option. It is using this Pilates wedge. So after 20 weeks, doctors suggest you shouldn't lay on your back flat for more than five minutes because it could create some blockage um, of oxygen and blood to your baby. So that's why they always suggest being at a slight incline. It should be about a 12 degree incline, which is what this wedge is. So this is, like I said, my favorite option. This is a balanced body. Um, when I bought it, it was around $215. I heard it's a little bit more in the 300s. So if you're a Pilates instructor, it's a great investment because you'll continuously use it if you have pregnant clients. So it is a little bit more expensive if it's, if it's your home machine and you're only gonna be pregnant once or twice or whatever. So, but this is my favorite. It's cushiony, it's soft. Um, it lays right between the shoulder rest. So it has a nice head, like long head pillow where your head lays and your body's on here. So then when you do footwork, you're at that incline. Like I said, it's cushiony. And then you can do normal footwork and it feels good. You might need to lighten the springs just a little bit than what you normally do. Um, I tend to not, or you could kind of hold on to the bottom because sometimes you feel like you're gonna slide up a little bit, but this is my favorite option. And you can always also use it for feet and straps. Um, use this wedge so like i said this is my favorite option but not always cost effective modification number two is using a jump board i have the cardio tramp which is fine you could still use it if you have the wooden jump board with the padding that's a little better option um, it's a little bit more comfortable but like i said you can still use the cardio tramp and this, a lot of times people have this, um, have the jump board, so it's an easy way to use it. Um, so you would take your jump board or cardio tramp, and then you would flip it over. So the part that you would normally put on um, in the pegs, like, is turned around. And because, like I said, because I have the cardio tramp, the metal um, rails is a little uncomfortable. So I have to actually put an extra padding on there. But like I said, if you have the normal wooden one, that should be padded all around. And it also is a little bit more sturdy because you're putting the back of it, um, the jump board, over the shoulder rest. So with the Cardio Champ, there's like a little give compared to the wooden jump board, which is super solid. But again, like I said, I patted it down. So you're now still at an incline. You can lay down on your back. And then again, do normal footwork or put your feet in the straps with this option as well. So this is a great alternative if you don't want to spend the money on the Pilates wedge and you already have a jump board, or maybe you're looking to invest in the jump board for future. You can use it as a dual purpose for when you're pregnant or after when you're jumping. The third modification option is using your box. I don't find, I like the previous two options better, so I would always suggest using those two first, but again, depending on your budget, just use, and you wanna use the props you need, um, 
then you got this option. So you have your box, make sure you put it in front of the shoulder rest because if you put it behind it, the box is gonna slide off because you're using your force to push it back. We also have to put the foot bar down one more notch because it's a little bit too close. And if I peg the machine out, then you really have no range of motion. So you could try pegging it out if you still feel like a little crammed, um, try it out. And then this option, I also have to lighten my springs a little bit. So if I was gonna do two reds, a blue and a white, I would probably only do two reds and a blue here or two reds. Um, yes, it's not as hard as you would normally do for footwork, but you're still getting to work those legs. So you're gonna press the carriage out. And also in this position or this variation, you only can do wide or like V position exercises because you are getting close and cramped. So if you do parallel, your belly gets in the way. So you're just gonna rest your elbows on the box. And you're kind of sitting up tall, lengthening through that spine. You can have your heels wide and then you're just gonna press the carriage out and then pull it in. So like I said, this is, you could do wide second position on your heels. You can do toes wide on putting your toes wide because you have that V or wide position. And obviously the slower you go, the harder it is. And then also you can do V position or first position on your toes and heels, both variations. So again, it is another alternative for footwork um, where you don't have to lay on your back flat. The, another thing that I, that you can't, I don't like about the box is you can't lay down on your back and do feet and straps, which is usually most people's favorite thing um, about Pilates. So with the box, obviously it's only good for footwork. And the fourth option for modifying, instead of laying on your back if you're pregnant after 20 weeks, is using your platform extender. So you're gonna wanna put your foot bar down another notch. So mine is almost at the bottom. It's slightly above the wooden platform. And then you're gonna have to peg your machine out. I'm gonna peg it out. I'm gonna do four notches. If you're a little bit taller, maybe five. And then you also need to go lighter on the springs. So I'm just gonna do two red springs. You can also go lighter, do a red and a blue spring. And then you're gonna take your platform extender and place it over the springs. So now we're gonna turn around and you want your bottom kind of close to the back and you can have your hands on the foot bar for a little rest and then you're going to place your heels wide in second position sitting up tall and you're using again the shoulder bar or the foot bar kind of to support you you're just going to press it out and in so this definitely even though it's two red springs it's much harder than if i was in the reverse direction so you probably could drop down a little bit lighter on the springs depending on how you feel or how your clients feel. And again, in this position, you can do heels wide, you can do toes wide, or you could do first position, toes or heels. Like I said, by sitting up, it makes it a little bit harder. Like if I did heels parallel, I only can come in a little bit. So I mean, if that's all someone wants to do, you can always give it a try. You just can't get as deep a range of motion with this variation. And again, this way you can't do feet and straps. So there you go. There are four different options. If you are pregnant or have a client that are pregnant, ways to lay down or do exercises where you would normally lay on your back after 20 weeks that are safe and that you can do. If you have any questions on pregnancy tips, just let me know and I will try to answer them.